So while well, not everybody may be very aware of the linkages which exist on the level of the soul or on the level of the agrochore, because also the agrochore is not for everybody, everybody has a spirit and the spirit has usually been through several incarnations. And these tend to have a very, very clear and strong impact on how we relate to each other. And it also becomes here a lot more personal. Like the differences we have on an egregorial level or on a level of our souls, they tend to be very general. Like, gosh, I like people who have an attitude like that. And we tend to have a positive view to all other members of your, uh, of your egregore or to a negative view of, to all members of a opposing egregore. But on the spirit level it gets very, very personal. It is not just about anybody, it is about that person who you love or hate. So what happens is that we, of course, incarnate, we have our lives, we have our goals, and sometimes it goes better, sometimes it doesn't go that well in our incarnations. And especially the things which don't go that well are remembered quite strongly. The things which go well, which have in a way um, led to a nourishment of our souls, of our spirit, they tend to be in a way consumed because there's no need to remember it because you have already achieved that goal, that transformation, so there's nothing more to work on. But the things which were somehow yeah, disrupted or failed or didn't grant the results you had hoped for, they tend to be taken along as yeah, a lesson or a memory for your next incarnation. So it's a little bit like you're trying to pass a test to graduate, to get your diploma, and yeah, once you've graduated you just get to work and you forget all about what you've been studying or what it was like in school or in university. But if you fail a test and you have to retake it and retake it and have to retake it three times to pass the course, uh, well, that is things which are still in a way on your plate. You can't move beyond that until you have finally succeeded in, in that. And these are the yeah, types of things we tend to take with us as a spirit. So part of it is a, is a warning, of course, like that you can remember what you did wrong in your previous life so you can prevent yourself from doing it wrong in this life. Often we tend to go into opposites. Um, so for instance, if I was maybe too selfish in a, in a last life, then I will be like overly humble and serving in, in this life. So people tend to overcompensate, like, oh my god, I failed, I'm not going to make that mistake again. And then they go into the other extreme, and then of course going into the other extreme also has problems, because it's also still unbalanced, and eventually you have to find a balanced way of doing it. So often when you notice that your own reaction is a very extreme reaction to something, it's an indication of a, a past life trauma. And these lives don't have to be lives on this planet or lives in a physical body. They can also be things which happen to you as a spirit or as a, a guide to a person that actually happens to the person you were watching over or guiding while you were a spirit. Because also these traumas are also lessons which we take with us. And it can be very difficult sometimes to distinguish whether you were actually incarnated or just guiding the person or being an onlooker to that big drama because you can feel very involved as if it is happening to you yourself. It's very similar to watching a movie and there's a very tragic scene and you cry because of the tragedy which is happening to somebody else or you laugh and you're happy because of the great things which are happening to the person on the, on the screen. And that is similar for the spirit, and it's hard to distinguish between first-hand and second-hand experiences. Although first-hand experiences tend to be 
stronger, even more difficult to control um, than second-hand experiences. So often if you feel you have you know, certain impulses which are beyond your control, they tend to come from this spirit level, like you might see a person and you love them or you hate them. That usually means there is a karmic connection with that person. You have done something together and it's not finished yet. So you might need to forgive each other, you might need to help each other, you might need to finish your fight and you might have learn how to overcome the other person or the other person might learn need to learn how to overcome you to enhance their power. So fighting is not always destructive. Fighting can always also be very constructive and that you're in a way each other's challenge and by challenging each other both of you will grow to higher levels by all the time overcoming each other. So it may not feel like it but ultimately all these things we take from the spirit level are there to yeah, help us with our weak points and especially because they are our weak points they tend to hurt and hurt is a negative feeling in many cases. So we tend to feel very strongly that if we're in contact with the person who we have this spirit connection with, that we have a loss of control. And this loss of control can be in a negative sense, like you hate the person, but also in a very positive sense, like you cannot say no to them, you cannot sever the connection with them, you cannot kick them out of your life even though you're having a horrible relationship with each other. And if you really want to resolve this, of course you can try to force yourself against your own spirit to yeah, uh, break with the pattern to get them out of your lives. But it's much more useful to try to see why they are there and ultimately it is not about that person. That person is just a reminder of something you need to learn or something you need to develop. And if you can see what the person stands for, what are they in a way the symbol of, then it becomes a very different story. Then you will realize that the real thing which is hurting you is your, in a way, inability to love or to stand up for yourself or um, to be efficient enough or good enough or something like that, that there might be a self-judgment behind it which is making you feel uncomfortable with the person or attracted to that person. So often a lot of our, you could say, illogical attractions that you're attracted to a person even you know, though you know you can't be together or you shouldn't be together uh, on a long-term uh, relationship basis, but you can't, you always feel pulled to them. Um, it's often an indication of this uh, spirit connection, which is often from a previous incarnation. So in family life and in social life, um, it is very much like they're pushing your buttons. They're turning on a system in you which you can't say no to. And the biggest problem is if it is very mutual, and you can have a sort of an understanding like, gosh, we have a click together, we need to do something together, we need to connect and we know that it is temporary. We need to devote ourselves to this, tr go through this transformation and then we can let go of each other again. But if there is no such awareness or if the awareness is one-sided, it can be very frustrating. Like you may feel like I need to share something with this other person, but they're like, no, go away. I don't have any interest in you or why would I? And then it's like very much you feel a pain, a need which is in a way ignored um, and you start to feel very unsure about yourself like how can I feel this if the other person is not feeling it? And it can be because you are traumatized by what happened but they are not. So maybe you were meant to learn something from them or give something to them, but maybe they have received it or managed to get it in some other way or in some other lifetime, but you still feel your failure. 
Um, so it can be a very uneven uh, relationship which is resulting from this uh, spirit connection. When I notice that something like this is going on, even though I personally might not feel a need to connect to this person, I think it is a very charitable thing to do to allow this other person to move beyond their trauma, to give them the time, the attention, the connection, the exchange they need to finish that part, so they won't have to carry it with them for yet another incarnation, yet another incarnation, until they finally meet me in an incarnation where I'm ready to work with them. Um, I've myself also experienced how frustrating it can be if you feel this connection and the other person is not acknowledging it and not willing to work with it. And it is feels like a huge waste for me, like, oh my god, now I'll have to find you again in another incarnation or you'll have to find me again to finally work on it and why can't we just get it over with? And then let go of each other, but not everybody is as aware of it, or even willing, even though they may acknowledge that you're feeling like this. Why would I want to give of my time, my energy, for you to work on your thing, on your problem? So they might be a little bit selfish about that. And if they are like that, try to create a win-win situation. Like, I feel I need this from you, but you can look and try to be creative, like, okay, but what are your needs? What I can also, you should try to look also beyond your own selfish needs and see, like, okay, what does the other person need from me? How can we make it a more even exchange so it also becomes a positive experience for the other person to, yeah, listen to the needs of someone else. So, oh somebody else needs me and instead of just being selfish about it and have this experience like okay all these times that yeah like I needed something and people have helped me now I can do give something back or like the people I've given something to they've been so grateful and they've also given me so much let's continue this pattern of helping each other and getting helping one another to get in this positive cooperative pattern I think it's very important. So I believe that when we do encounter these um, soul inheritances or these soul memories, uh, sorry, spirit inheritances, spirit memories, that it's uh, very important that we try to find out what is behind it because it is never really about the other person. It is always about what we were supposed to learn from the other person or what the other person prevented us maybe from learning and then we need to may, find a way to bypass the other person's blockage or to give back this trauma uh, or energy back to them. It can also be that you actually leave parts of yourself with the other person as for safekeeping. So it might be that in a certain life I develop, I don't know, a great healing skill and person who's my significant other, we blend our energies and this person has, you could say, a copy, an abstract of my healing skill. And in another incarnation I want to get back my healing skill, but it's been many lifetimes ago and I've kind of like forgotten about it myself, but by making contact with this copy the other person has, I can start remembering this part of myself, I can bring it back to life. And this contact can be like the little match which lights the big amount of wood I have to create a strong fire. So it can be the catalyst. And very often these spirit relations are very catalytic in nature where you really awaken each other. Um, so I'm always very much in, in favor of exploring these spirit relationships, but they often go, yeah, co are connected to a lot of emotions and often also a lot of um, negative emotions of um, not receiving something, uh, of failing, of um, sometimes hatred, of being enemies. Um, and 
in relationships this can be very very confusing because you feel this attraction you're pulled to the other person but at the same time you're always fighting each other or criticizing each other or attacking each other so and it's very important not to recreate the same problem that it just becomes like you fight each other and you block each other in the previous life you continue it in this life in the next and the next and the next then it becomes a bigger and bigger gap and trauma because ultimately it is not about winning it is about learning how to win how to defend yourself and if you look at it in this way when you feel this attraction and the other person is challenging you or fighting you don't focus on beating the other person into a pulp or grinding them down it's not about winning it never is because ultimately every victory is blown away by time but the transformations they can be taken with you so try to learn from all these conflicts from all these challenges and make both yourself and the person you're fighting with into a better person to a wiser person into a stronger person so i hope this will um, help a little bit um, to recognize these uh, these spiritual inheritances and also to um, see how by meeting again spirits you have a connection with and these are offering great opportunities to awaken your own yeah, unfinished projects of uh, self-development and growth and also those in the other if they feel this need or this connection to you. In the last video of this series I will be talking about bloodlines. These are the inheritances you have from not so much your own set of incarnations but rather from your ancestral line.